So welcome to not so sunny Castleton in the Peak District. Today we're going to head down the Limestone Way. Should it's a 42 mile length in total. We're only going to do a section of it today, but the plan is long term that we're going to actually do the whole length at some point this year. Hey, hope you're well. Today we're taking on our first long run since our Hadrian's Wall adventure. Now we're starting out here by going through Cave Dale, which used to be a bit of a hidden gem. It's just outside of Carsten, but most people tend to go straight for Mam Tor, which is kind of the big ridge line that runs north of Carsten. Or they hit the caves, cafes, pubs in town. It's quite a busy little hub. However, you can see it is quite popular today, and it comes as always a bit of an abrupt change from town to country, which is what I love about it. And it's really, really easy to get to. Now, I've sped it up here, but you'll see a load more of the area as we come towards the end, minus the grockles. Now the route we're following is part of the Limestone Way, which is a waymarked route that kind of crosses some familiar territory. We go near Tissington and High Peak Trails, but this route actually starts in Castleton in Derbyshire and runs south through to Rochester in Staffordshire. And it's around about 46 miles or 75 kilometers in length. We are not going that far today. Um, you can of course do this in the opposite direction, but we were in a Castleton for the weekend which is why we decided to head south. Now for a first long run after Hadrian, it was a bit of a wake up call um, as you basically start out with a 450 meter above sea level climb uh, within the first 20 to 25 minutes, which really does get the blood pumping and sweat flowing. But when you get there, you then have kind of a steady decline for around about an hour before you have to tackle any more serious hills. Now we've walked around here in the past, but not for years and we've never really run it so it has to be said it is a glorious place particularly when the weather is sunny it was a fair mix of road and unpaved trail and surprisingly the ground wasn't flooded or too soggy but as you can see with any running route in the peaks some areas are just safer to take your time over unless you want to be uh, carrying on and slogging through a sprained ankle We're heading way off course here. We got distracted by some walkers and just plodded on without looking at our maps. But basically the ground got really, really wet and boggy, which allowed us to course correct by looking at our maps and heading back up to the main road. Now here we are back on the main trail. And as were all my concerns at the start about the weather, it did actually hold up really, really well. And, and around about mile nine, we came across a pub, stopped for a drink, reviewed our maps before we decided it's probably a good place to turn around. Basically, we didn't start off until about one o'clock in the afternoon. And had we decided to go any further, we would have had chances of running in the dark, which at this stage, probably not too much fun. Here we are heading back towards Carston. Lots of cows, including an angry barking one. Any minute now. You tell them. Now we did find a slightly different route back, or more accurately, we found the uh, limestone way route back as we managed to get lost some way on the point. Somewhere along the way, on the way down, we managed to go off point, so, uh, this is the actual limestone path. Now the path back was a long, slow climb, as you can imagine, it was slow on the way down. But I do tend to prefer going uphill than down, even if it is only a slight gradient, uh, just when you thought I wasn't odd enough. And the views were excellent. It really was a glorious, glorious evening. There's a small pond that kind of signifies we're now heading back down into Castleton. Now, if you do visit Castleton and you don't want to run but you want to see the scenes, I would strongly recommend walking up to the top of Cavedale. You just need a sturdy pair of shoes, he says, wearing trainers. But as long as you're fairly steady on your feet, it's actually quite an yeah, easy trail up there. 
I'm just going to speed it up just to get us down the hill. It's one of these things, I did keep my camera on for such a long while down here. It was such a glorious evening. Just don't know that it translated too well into the video. But yeah, if you are walking up, this is where I recommend you walk up to. As you can see, you've got some stunning views back down there over the bottom. It is a bit more challenging going back down, so you do need to be a bit steady on your feet, but you do get a nice view of Peveril Castle. And if you have not come across Peveril Castle, it is actually one of England's earliest Norman fortresses. So again, well worth a look-see. Um, just to let you know, of course, it is an English heritage one. So unless you're a member, you may need to uh, get a new mortgage just to have a look at it. So that was way harder than expected, but uh, we did it. Um, not set the timer off properly. Is that 17 and a half, 18 miles? 17 and a half. 17 and a half, yeah. So it's good. Right. Thank you for watching. See you next video.